I hunger for it, man. You know I gotta get it. I hit the ground running. You know I gotta get it. I see that money coming. You know I gotta get it. I gotta get it, gotta get it. Yeah, I gotta get it. Whatever's necessary. You know I gotta get it. Bullshit is secondary. You know I gotta get it. They say we legendary. You know I gotta get it. I gotta get it, gotta get it. Yeah, I gotta get it. Yeah, that's my shit right there. My thug there. You follow what I'm saying? So this your homeboy, Marla Pimp, a.k.a. MTP. And welcome to another special edition of the Pimp Hall TV podcast. And I got a very special guest in here. I'm talking about this nigga right here, Baton Rouge legend. Down South legend, if you do your research, you follow what I'm saying? Down South legend. I'm talking about my nigga, Maximum Lilly. Welcome to Pimp Hall TV. And how you doing, homeboy? What's up with the gangster, man? Appreciate you having me, bro. Hey man, it's all good, man. First of all, before we get to the interview, man, how, how you been doing, Max, bro? What's going on? How you been doing, home, bro? Uh, man, I just been cooling, bro. Just keeping my head down, working, staying out of these niggas' way, bro. That's all. Gotcha, gotcha. So what I want, what yeah, I want to do, sir. bro, I want to go from the beginning and bring everybody up, back up to, uh, to actually up to speed about what's going on now. So, uh, okay. first and foremost, like, all right, how you getting into the music? No, 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 before I get into that, bro, what, what was you born and raised at? For everybody who needs to know that, what was you born and raised at? All right, man, I was born in New Orleans. Uh, I lived in New Orleans till I was like 10. Then I moved to California, um, L.A., and I stayed there for three years. Then I moved to back to Louisiana. Um, I was living in a country town called Irwinville. That's where, like, my mama, my grandmother, and all my mama people is from. And uh, so when we moved back from California, we moved to Irvingville. And, um, but then, you know, like, eventually I ended up in Baton Rouge. Like, like I say, it's, the, 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 the little town of Irvingville is like 20 minutes from Baton Rouge. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was like back and forth, like, uh, you know, from there to, to BR and um uh, shit, you know, eventually I ended up in BR and you know that's 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 what BR what made me a man. So that's why I say I was, you know, where I really grew up at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I gotta give a shout out to my sponsor, the Chattanooga Cigar Club. Again, the Chattanooga Cigar Club. Let me tell y'all about the Chattanooga Cigar Club. The Chattanooga Cigar Club is Chattanooga's premier cigar and hookah lounge. Open Thursday through Sunday with ladies free on Friday and live music up until 10 o'clock. Keep in mind, you can also rent the building for your own events from Sunday through Wednesday. Shout out to my guys D. Scott and Kurt at the Chattanooga Cigar Club. For more information, log on to ChattanoogaCigarClub.com. Again, salute to my sponsor, the Chattanooga Cigar Club. Much love. Yeah. So, uh, how did you get into the music, man? How, how did the music come into your lifestyle? Man, like... It's crazy, bro. Like when I was when I was little, when I was a kid, bro. Like I, it's like I always see myself doing like some type of, you know, entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I used to, I used to dance like Michael Jackson and shit. Like my mama used to, you know, tell me come, you know, do the Michael Jackson moves, people and shit like that. Um, and then you know, eventually, once you know, you know, rap that shit was just like, you know. You felt that shit in your soul, like you right. know what I'm saying. Right. So, you know, I used to, um, I used to like watch the, you know, like Ed Cool J and Rakim videos and shit, and you know, act like do all of the moves they was doing and all that. <clears throat> and then eventually, uh, like I was saying, when I moved to California, my mama had a dude that she worked with that actually had like a little studio and shit in his house and you know he was a producer and all that so um once i realized you know he had all that i was listening at the ice cube first album that america's most wanted right and like man that shit just i used to listen at that shit every day bro um that shit like just you know fuck my head up you know that was the dopest shit in the world to me and so he had a song on there uh called gangsta fairy tale where he was kind of talking like you know about you know, like all the cartoon characters and shit, and he had put them in like you know gangster situation. I know you know what I'm talking about, but you exactly. know, this is oh, exactly. yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. But uh, 
So, you know, like, I was like, you know, me being a kid, like I said, I was like 10 years old, 9 or 10 years old at this time. So I was like, man, look, I'm going to write me a rap kind of like that, you know. And uh, I asked the dude, you know, if he would make me a beat and shit. Because I used to go to work with my mama during the summer. You know what I'm saying? Like, All right. during the summer when nigga ain't had no school, uh, my mom used to take me to work with her. So I used to be in the office with her and shit. And, uh... So yeah, dude was like, yeah, man, you you know you write your rap, you know you could come record at, at my house. So I I went home that night, wrote me a rap, you know, three verses. I like ain't nobody tell me how to write it, how to format a song, and none of that is like I just knew how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, eventually, I can't remember how long it was. A few days later, my mama took me to uh, do house and shit. I, I recorded my first little demo, you know what I'm saying? And then uh, eventually I went back and did another one. I did two uh, demos with him. And then, you know, we got moved back to California. You know, my mama shipped our ass back. I mean, from California back to Louisiana. And then once I got back to Louisiana, you know, I was like, shh. It's fucked up, like my, my little rap dream was crushed, you know what I'm saying? Cause right, leaving California, like, leaving California, yeah, yeah. And you yeah. know, at that time, you know, it, you know, today everybody a fucking rapper, you know, but back then, you know, that shit wasn't, you know, Louisiana they ain't had no rappers, you know what I'm saying? Um, right, 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 so, right, right. You know, it was it was like a few years eventually, um, that I met, you know, Young Bleed. You know, through some of my older cousins, they went to school with him and shit. And once they found out that I, you know, was rapping and shit, you know, he was the only other dude that they knew of that was doing that rap shit too. So they introduced me to him. And you know, you know, Bleed was, you know, Bleed a little older than me, so he was already, you know, out moving around and doing his thing. And you know, he knew where studios was at and all that kind of shit. So by me linking with him, you know, that kind of put me put me on the tracks to eventually, you know, to me sitting here with you today. You know what I'm saying? So let me ask you this, bro. You kind of answered the question, but I'm going to kind of still rephrase in another, in another situation. All right, okay. now, you in Louisiana. I'm in Tennessee right. at the time. Right. So the first time I hear about Max Manila, Young Bleed, CeeLo, and Lil Boosie, the first time I hear about that and the, and the people in Tennessee hear about that, it's on the album called The Concentration Camp. You follow what I'm saying? So that's how we first, right. that's how we first get wind of you, bro. You follow what I'm saying? Right. So my question is, how did Max Manila, CeeLo, Young Bleed, and Boosie all come together? How did, how did that happen, bro? Right. Well, um, eventually, I mean, back in the day, you know, Loke and Bleed grew up together. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, they went to school together and they grew up in the neighborhood together and all that shit. So, you know, they've been knowing each other since kids. And, um, you know, like I say, Bleed always was, you know, doing that rap shit since he was young. Um, and Loke, I think at one point, Loke was be DJ or something. Like, this way back, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. All right. So, uh, but then eventually, you know, once Loke decided he was going to start his own label, you know, and get that going, uh, you know, naturally he he would go fuck with Bleed because, you know, Bleed was like the dopest nigga out there, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, like, right. And um, so, yeah, so once Loke put his label, Loke started his label, you know, he went fuck with Bleed, you know, um, and like I say, I knew Bleed, and then, you know, I had I had my own little crew, like it was me, uh, a guy named Jay Vaughn, me and him was a group called Lalo. We was a two man group called all right, Lalo. All right, all right. And then you know, uh, Happy Perez, the producer. You know, he was our partner too. He went to school with us. He had moved from like his parents. His dad had moved from Texas. He from Texas. He from you know Houston area. Um, but his pops eventually got like a job or something in Baton Rouge, and that moved them down there. He just so happened to come to our school. And so, you know, me and Vaughn used to be beating on the lunch table every day rapping and shit, you know, it was like that was our thing at school. Everybody knew, you know, we was them niggas with that rap shit. So, you know, Happy, when he came out of school, he, you know, approached us and was like, man, you know, I, I, I do beats and shit, you know what I'm saying? And like, like I say, we, 
we ain't really like how you do beats, you know what I'm saying? Because we ain't, we ain't right. really, you know, it wasn't, right. you know, niggas ain't do that kind of shit back then. So we uh, eventually pulled up to his crib and shit. He had like a little ass keyboard about this big, a little Casio keyboard. But man, they was making some of the coldest beats, you know, you ever want to hear on that little fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? So, so you you know, I kind of backtrack a little bit, but you know, I'm just trying to put the whole picture together right, for you. Right, yeah, right. Who you got? Yeah, you know, so, so, bam, Loke started his label. He fucking with Bleed. You know, I know Bleed. I got my partner, Vaughn, and Happy, you know, the producer. So Bleed brought us to Loke, and that's how we all kind of formed, you know what I'm saying? The, um, the concentration camp, you know, Bleed, uh, had the 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 idea for the name the concentration camp and shit like that um you know back then so that's how we all kind of formed this kind of like a Wu Tang Clan kind of thing where it was like one big crew you know what I'm saying but within that crew it was different you know you had solo artists you had group you know things like that and so that's how we kind of all really came about you know from the beginning um now the boosty situation kind of like two eras of the of the camp, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was the first initial era where it was like, you know, Low Bleed, Max Vaughn, um, Boo Rossini from Mississippi, Lee Time, uh, and, you know, we had a couple other people. Then, you know, once we, we had got like, well, they had got a deal with Priority, you know, Bleed signed with Priority. He dropped his album on Priority. Slash no limit, kind of. It was kind of on no limit, but not really. Right, right. Um, yeah, and um, so um, <clears throat> then you know we did a group album called Concentration Camp on Priority, and then you know you know how that rap shit go, bro. Niggas eventually had differences and kind of go their own separate ways. You know what I'm saying? So once that first initial uh version of the camp kind of fizzled out you know everybody kind of went their own ways and shit and then you know eventually me and Loke linked back up Loke was uh you know it was like man we need to you know try to do something you know so me and him got back in the lab and started working on some new shit and then uh we got a partner named Frog from you know he from the neighborhood he the one who knew about Boosie. Boosie was like a kid. Like, he was like how I was, you know, when I first came back. You know, he was little. You know, he had to be like 12, 13 at the most. Um, But he came, uh, my pot, our partner Frog came told Loke, like, man, they got this little dude, you know, from across the track over there named Boosie, man. He raw. You got to check him out. So, eventually, he bought Boosie. Loke to check Boosie out and Loke, you know, shit, Loke loved him, you know, when he first heard him because he was just raw, you know, he was just a little nigga with a little, you know, his voice, you know, he had that little squeaky voice. Yeah. And he was just, yeah, but he was just talking about, you know, just the most official gangster shit, you know what I'm saying? And it, you could tell, like, he really lived and seen that shit. It wasn't like no right. made up shit, you know what I'm saying? So right, right. he was authentic. So, you know, Loke brought him in. And it really was me, him, and Lope kind of put together, you know, the second version of the camp. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, that's that's how, that's kind of like everything in a nutshell. I know it's a long, drawn out. Uh, nah, I get it. I get exactly what you're saying, bro. I get exactly what you're but saying. But, you know, this all happened from, let's say, from around a period of like 1995 to, you know, 2000. You know what I'm saying? So, within them five years, all this shit was taking place. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this then, bro. You said 1995 to 2000. 1998, mm -hmm. the Concentration Camp put out an album called The Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Speak on that, bro. How they came together, you know, what they did for y'all, how they helped, you know what I'm saying? Like, speak on the Holocaust album from 1998 from the Concentration Camp, bro. Right. Um, well, it really, Bleed, bleed album, Bob's in my word, really what kicked it out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, let me let me go back a little bit more than that. Go ahead. In nineteen in nineteen ninety seven, I think it was either ninety six or ninety seven. I can't remember. Lope put out a compilation called the Concentration Camp. Right. So that was like the 
the first concentration camp, but it was a compilation album. We all had songs on it, but it also had like other, you know, songs from other people right. that wasn't really, you know, affiliated with us. Cause you know, back then, like compilations was like, you know, the shit. Like everybody was doing, right, how, you know, P had like, you know, West Coast bad boys and down south right. hustlers and all that kind of shit. Right, right, right. You know, niggas in California was doing them, Texas, you know, everywhere, Tennessee. So, you know, he did that. It was called the concentration camp. Well, that's what bleeds song uh, a fool, which people call how you do that there. The original how you do that there was on the concentration camp compilation. Well, right. once that song blew the fuck up, you know, that's when all the priority shit started happening. Right. So when Bleed got the deal with priority, low got the label deal with priority. The first thing we worked on was Bleed album, which was Bows in My Word. You know what I'm saying? And that's, you know, that's like a, that's a classic classic. You know what I'm saying? Of course, yeah, uh, of course, yeah. So that kind of what kicked everything off. When Bleed, we finished Bleed album and came out, that bitch went gold. It was, you know, major success. Then we started working on the Concentration Camp 2, which was the Holocaust. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, so... At this point, it was, you know, we, it was more so like a real group group. You know, it was Low Bleed, me, Bon, uh, Boo, Lee Time, uh, and, you know, Happy and Loke was doing all the production. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was more of a group thing. You know what I'm saying? And then at this point, we really was like, you know, the chance to put our vision together the way, you know, we, had planned from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? It's like we did all that other shit to kind of like move ourselves into the position to be able to right, 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 you know what right, I'm saying? Right. So yeah, man, it was you know we shit we we went in, but it's like we used to live at the yo like Loke had had the yo at his house, you know what I'm saying? So okay. we we just used to live in that bitch, bro, and we just used to work on music, you know, twenty four seven, you know what I'm saying? Niggas go to the club, come. Back to the old record, wake up, record, all day record, you know. And shit, we was all young when, you know, bleeding located kids and shit, they was a little older than us, but as far as me and Bond and Happy, like, we was, you know, shit, 16, 15, 16 years old. So that's all we had to, you know, all we lived for was just rapping, you know what I'm saying? So we just used to work on that shit all day, bro. Let me ask this, Max. Uh, so going back to your CeeLo days, before the nationwide shit came in, uh, since I'm an artist, I like to ask shit like this. You feel me? So going back to the CeeLo days, we talking about the, the independent days, the underground days. Give me a right. few memories, bro, that you can remember. Shit, shit that you would, that you would take to grave with you, bro, from the CeeLo days. You know what I'm saying? Just like little memories that went down, whatever. <laughs> Speak on shit like that. Some man. Of you, like, 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 man, bro, that right there, bro. I never forget that. You know what I'm saying? What, what is it? Man, it was it was so much shit, bro. Like I say, bro, it was like, uh, hold on a second. Sip that shit. Sip that shit. Sip that <laughs> shit. Nah, ain't, uh, nah, ain't nothing but a little cold drink, man. <laughs> oh, but yeah, bro, it was man, so much shit, bro. Like, you know, it was like it was a click house. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it was just action all day every day you know what i'm saying like at any any given moment anything i happen around that motherfucker you know what i'm saying and it was fun you know it was fun it was like you know when you young and you just you know we young bro we you know starting to starting to do our thing with the music people starting to know our name and shit you know we doing shows we doing this we doing that you know and then it's like the whole neighborhood used to just come pull up at that bitch, you know what I'm saying? So right, 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 right. right. It, you know, it'll, it'll be uh hold on man, my dog in here making us get out of here. What's up, what's up? I gotta give a special shout out to my sponsor, the Am Group LLC. Let me tell y'all about the Am Group LLC. The Am Group LLC is an independent distribution company that offers essential services such as internet, home security, energy, identity protection, wireless and more. Secure your homes and businesses. Get a free consultation from my homegirl, Miss Nori Nori, 
email the mgroupllc at gmail.com to schedule your appointment. You can also visit www.isnorinorin.com. Click the services tab to check out all the deals that they offer. Salute to my sponsor, the M Group LLC. Much love. Y'all go check them out. Yo. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's the shit. This little motherfucker bad, bro. But, uh, you know, it just used to be fun, bro. Like, they, you know, niggas that had, had a barbecue pit going any given day, any time, you know, two o'clock in the morning, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but just, I mean, as far as like, um, just memories, bro, like, ain't really, ain't really, ain't really, um, one thing or another that really just stick out, bro. It was just overall, just you know, it was just got times was just was just good. You know, they had they had a a, a a lot of crazy shit going on too. You know what I'm saying? Was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe I, that, bro. I believe that. Bro. I ain't gonna really speak on that, but I you believe know, it's just like I say, bro. Just you, you never knew what it was what it was gonna be. You know what I'm saying? In, in, in a given day, it'll just be man, just whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it was fun, bro. You know, young niggas fucking with bras and, you know, just having fun, bro. Let me ask you this, Max. Uh, so, back in those days, the concentration camp days, now, bleed goes, young bleed goes off and do a deal with priority through No Limit. Of course, mm -hmm. inspired by the song, how you do that, though. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Then eventually, uh, Trill Entertainment buys out Booster's contract from uh C Lo. So Booster right. goes over with Trill, him, Fox Webby, uh right. Little Trill, Mouse and all that, you follow what I'm saying? Right. Uh now this is a question I want to ask you. Was there ever option for Maximilian on the on the table with with Trill? You follow what I'm saying? Me personally I could have yeah. heard you, I could have heard you over there. You follow what I'm saying? Man, well, look, look, this is the crazy thing about that like but me, me and you know, <clears throat> I told you it was me and a dude named Jay Vaughn. We had a group called Lalo, right? Right. Me and him was fucking with Turk and Mel even before Boosie, before all that. You know what I'm Turk saying? And Mel, um, right. Salute. Salute. Yeah. yeah. So this this when they first first was starting Trill Entertainment, like, you know, um, man, I, I actually had met Turk in the mall. They just they I was in the mall one day. Came up to me and was like, hey man, you make whatever, whatever. I was like, yeah, it was Turk and it was a dude named Smitty. Now, if you remember on um, some of UGK shit, they used to have a dude named Smitty that used to rap with him. He was an artist from um, Port Arthur, Texas. Right. And he was he he was the original artist of Trill Entertainment. Okay. So it was Turk and Smitty in uh they came up to me, you know, whatever, whatever. So we chopped it up. I got their number and shit. So, you know, I just started kicking it with Turk and Mel. And uh, so they wanted to sign me and Bond, you know what I'm saying, to Trill Entertainment. Um, you know, they took us to Pimp C House. We did some, we did a few songs with Pimp C and shit. And the crazy thing about it is, like, a few of them songs that Boosie eventually came out with when he first first started with Trill. It was it it was actually a bootleg boosie C D where he had uh he had them songs on it. Remember he had that song with Pimp C where them dollars at in my pocket you bitch yeah, remember all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Gangsta Boo, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that uh it was that like a baby needs to cry. I need you, uh, that song. Uh, it was a few songs he had, like Pimp C and shit. Me and Bond was actually on them songs at first. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, so yeah, to answer your question, bro, like we was fucking with Trill Entertainment before Boosie was fucking with Trill Entertainment. You know okay. what I'm saying? Right. Actually, I, I know that. Way, I know that. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, that's like some shit that, you know, a lot of people don't know because, I, you know, I don't really talk about it a lot. But, um, yeah, bro. So, yeah, we was. And then eventually, like, later on, like, I had signed a deal with Koch, uh in 06, I think that was. Um, and, like, the people at Koch, like, they really didn't know what to do with me. You know what I'm saying? Because the type of artist I am is, like, you know, I'm not just a, 
just one dimensional, you know, just right. street shit artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. I, I like to say, like, I was, you know, like them niggas, J. Cole and Drake and them before them. You know what I'm saying? Right, but right. I get it. I get it. But when you look at, you know, back then, like, everything was just all about gangster and club street music. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm right. coming with, like, these different type of records, you know, Koch, they didn't really know what to do with me. So they had a they had an idea to like, you know, they knew I was cool with with Turk and Mel from Trill. So we kind of like had a little meeting, and they met with the dude Alan Grunblatt from. I know, I know, Kyle. yeah, I know Alan from Korea. Yeah, I know Alan. Yeah. I know Alan. Yeah. yeah, so it was kind of like a we talked about like maybe doing a little with kind of like what Bleed did with No Limit at first. You know when he was. He was really on priority, but they just kind of right. like put the no limit shit to kind of, you right. know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, right. yeah, so we had talked with them about maybe doing that with me with Trill, you know, kind of just, you know, kind of stamp it as Trill and kind of, you know, do some shit like that to kind of help it jump off a little bit. But uh, we ended up not doing it, you know what I'm saying? But, <clears throat> you know, um, Shout out to Turk and Mill, man. I fuck with Turk and Mill. That's my dogs. You know what I'm saying? Them, them, you know, them OGs to us. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Hey, uh, so uh let me ask you this right quick, bro. Uh first, let me let me go through your history, bro, for people that don't know. Cause you got a whole right. of music, dog. You feel me? So let me go through this shit. You feel me? Uh, Max Manetta, God's Gift, 2000, yeah. 2015. You feel me? Uh, yeah. Gunpowder for Breakfast, 2013. Yeah. 2012, Lunch Money. 2020, yep. Cold Day in Hell. 2017, yep. The Max Tape. 2001, Me and My Hustle. 2016, Testify. 2011, pre-med. 2015, Dope Boy Chad, 1.2. 2014, Dope Boy Chad. 2008, The Remedy. 2011, Max Payne, Part 2. 2011 again, Number One Supplier. 2019, Got Served. 2008, On The Cut. 2009, The Pain Medicine. 2011, Heart of a King. 2019, Say Goodbye. 2004, Me and My Hustle. Hey, bro, you got a whole long list of albums, dog. You follow what I'm saying? A long, right. like, a long list of albums. So for right. me, you being an artist, and you being an artist, fuck the podcast. Artist to artist. Out of all the shit I just named, bro, what album is the most sentimental to you and why? Um, sentimental? I'm going to say me and my hustle because that was my first solo album. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, before that, you know, I was doing, you know, groups, concentration camp, lay low. Um, we dropped one lay low album in 99. Before that, it was concentration camp and, you know, contributing to bleed album and local album and all that. Right. Well, by the time um, 2001 came around, was like man it's my time to you know do my thing you know what i'm saying right. uh right so yeah so 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 sentimental that's my most sentimental album uh and you know a lot of people say that's that's a, a classic album of mine you know what i'm saying uh, a lot of people that album but, but but what album do i think is his work is pain medicine that's mm -hmm. the one that came out in 2009 why you say why you um, say that why you say that? Uh, I just feel like I was I was I, I was on at the top of my shit at that point. You know what I'm saying? And uh it's just like just everything like the production, um, the concepts, like just you know my delivery, all that shit, I think, you know, just overall I think that's my best work, you know what I'm saying? Um but yeah, but like 2001, well, really before that, if you add all the group shit I was doing, but from 2001 and every year after that, I dropped the album. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. 2001, right. me and my hustle. 2002, Max Payne. 2003, I'm all I got. 2004, that boy. 2005, get served. Then I started doing mixtapes and shit in between, you know, albums. So, yeah, like, that's how that's how you get all them, you know, titles you just named off. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like, you know, just, man, you know, just trying to, you know, stay relevant and, and shit, keep eating. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, man, you you know how the independent shit go. You yeah. know, back then yeah. we used to sell CD. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. Speak on that shit, homie. Speak on that shit, my nigga. Yeah, right you know. There. Right, you Fuck know, the downloads, we, man. We sell CDs, right? Downloads, right, CDs. right, right. Yeah, and, and shit. That's that's when money was real good. You know, right, right, yeah. exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, so you know, it was uh, it was nothing to just you know, man, just keep keep that shit going, bro, and, and keep on eating. You know what I'm saying? That that that's what it was all about. So let me let me let me uh, let me ask you this, man. Uh, when you go city to city, doing your songs and doing your tours, mm. in your opinion, out of all the shit you done did, album for album, feature for feature, mixtape for mixtape, what song is the song when you go to when you got booked for your shows that resonates with the crowd? You follow me? What's the song that okay? I don't care. I don't care what I'm doing. I got to do this song right here. What song is that? Man, it's really a few of them, bro. Uh, like. Uh, I got a song called Do Something with uh, me and Lope. That's like, you know, I, I used to couldn't do that song without without them fighting off that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, all right. It, it, but that that's like, a, you know, that's classic Max shit. Do Something, uh, I'm So On. Um, and then like recently, you know, the... More recent ones like "Can I Help You," "Bitch Get Out Your Feelings," you know, um, songs like that. But them classic, classic ones definitely do something. I'm so on, um, man. Nerves bad. Uh, it's, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a few ones, bro. You know, more 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 of the you know, um, high energy club type shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, man, mo most of the shows I do be at clubs now. Nah, so it's like you want to keep, you know, you want to just do that shit that's like uh, keep the motherfuckers, you know, jumping. You know what I'm saying? Well, of course, right. Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me ask this. Let me say this for one before I ask you this question. Let me I turn this light on right quick. I see it getting Do your thing, bro. Do your thing. Do that, do that. Okay, right, I, tell, that's a I, tell, I, I tell a lot of artists in my city, bro, how important it is to network and build relationships. You follow what I'm saying? Like, right. My whole uh, scenario, my whole preaching, my whole guideline is, bro, build relationships. Relationships push on places that money can't. You follow what I'm saying? You can't pay for a real relationship. You follow what I'm saying? You, you can't pay for a know real it. relationship. So, you being from the old school and still dealing with the new school, you follow what I'm saying? Speak mm -hmm. on the importance of networking and how, how, how important that will help your career if you have relationships. Speak on that, bro. More on some Man. advice type of shit. Speak on that. Yeah, like, dog. I mean, see, you, you, you just said it, bro. Like, you know, your, 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 your face card good, bro. That's going to get you in doors that, you know, you, you, you ain't, you know, you never thought you would be able to get in. Or, this is a perfect example, like, you you never know who you meet today, what they might end up being tomorrow. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So like like for instance is a perfect example. Um, my partner is a dude named Jay Tweezer. He was the PD of the radio station in BR, right? Man, like, right, right. I know him. Yeah, I know, I know who he is. Okay. Who he is. Yeah, like, but he's. He wasn't always the PD, you know what I'm saying? He started off just a, you know, a dude on the radio, like from seven to nine or some shit like that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, he didn't have no power to play what he wanted or nothing. But you know, I, I mean, you know, I was cool with him, and like I remember when uh when he first kind of like started on the radio, 
he wanted to do a compilation and shit. So he he hollered at me and was like, man, you know, you think you could get on this compilation for me and all that? I'm like, yeah, you know, I got you, bro. You know, so I came through, did a song for him and all that. Well, fast forward it, eventually he became the PD. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, he never forgot that I was fucking with him when he wasn't the PD. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, so, right, right, right. Exactly. So, so, you know, it was like a situation where, bro, it didn't matter if I, I could have did a song today and bought that bitch from the studio straight to the radio, he was going to play that bitch for me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's like a perfect example um, of that, bro. Like, you know, people like the, you know, sometimes, you know, niggas be feeling they self and, you know, they might shit on people or treat people a certain right, kind of way right, and all this. Right. But, yeah. like, man, you don't know what, you know, you don't know what that dude going to be end up being and how he could end up, you know, helping you or hurting you. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So, right. you know, the relationships is everything, bro. Your face card is everything. Like, you know, and it's just like, dog, like, man, I done got movie roles because of that. You know what I'm saying? I done got a whole lot of shit because of that. Like, just at the end of the day, bro, just being a real nigga and being solid, you you, you never know who watched. You never know who paying attention. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I want to hear, bro. Exactly. That's what I want to yeah. hear. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you never know who paying attention, bro. So, you know, it just, it always pays to just be a solid dude, bro. And, you know, carry yourself and treat everybody with respect. You know what I'm saying? Respect, giving respect. Get, get. You want respect, you give respect. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, bro. Like, a relationship is everything, bro. Like, you know, and then, you know, like, you could pay for a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? But one. I'm I Max, let me ask you this, bro. With you being an OG in the game, you feel me? Come from back in the day, and then you you still being around to see what's going on now. Uh what's the difference between the industry back then versus what's going on now? Speak on that. Man, um the main thing that I that I peep about today is that like everything is just so quick and easy. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's easy for niggas to just get on. Like, you know, a nigga could start rapping today, bro, and six weeks from now, that nigga will be the hottest in the game. You know what I'm saying? You right about that. You right. You know, it, it's just because of, you know, the, the social media and, you know, like, it, the technology have made it to where, like, you know, all the shit we used to have to do and go through just to, you know, record a record, get a record out, you know, get a record distributed, you know, now nah, you just record a song, press a button, that bitch available all across the world. Anybody in the world could listen to your shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't have it like that. Like, you know, we really right. had to, you know really jump on that slab and you know get out we had, there and we, had, we, had, we had we had we had to hit the streets we had to hit the streets bro exactly exactly so you know that's like the that's like the main um thing that i you know point to the difference between nine and then you know and then you know also that kind of give niggas a false sense of like you know success too you know what i'm saying because hell yeah hell you yeah. know it's like man you, hell yeah you know, when, you know when 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 you get some shit that quick, you also lose it that quick. You know what I'm saying? And like you see a lot of people, you know, with these songs, niggas just got a song that bitch hot, you know, and they don't really build um their relationship with they with their audience, with their fans. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the 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 audience don't really know the artist; they just know the song. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, and right, it's right. Like you know, so you know that kind of way you don't really get to really build no. You know, it's all this development. You know, back then, you know, we we used to have that shit. All this development, you know, you right, always used to right. hear that shit like, right. And you know right. that was just developing, you know, yourself as an artist and connecting with your, you know, with your with your audience, you know, and right. and and they knew, you know, they they followed you on that journey. You know what I'm saying? So so they had like a different kind of love and they fuck with you a different kind of weight. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you this. But, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Now, Let me ask you this. The new artists in the game, bro. What new artists is Max Miller listening to? Or what new artists got Max Miller attention, bro? You feel me? Man, I... I, I who you fucking fuck with? Man. Who you fucking with? I mean, you know, it, all, the, all the dudes from, from my city, bro, I fuck with. You know what I'm saying? Um, right. I, I I I got love love from um, you know just simply because I know what we up against down here, you know what yeah. I'm saying. So for um you know and I ain't trying to say everybody everywhere else ain't up against you know everybody up against their own little thing, but and connected to it, you know it 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 it, it feel different to me, you know what I'm saying. So um. You know, all, all these youngsters, bro, that's, that's, that's coming, bro, I hey, bro, like, any nigga that, that, that can make money doing this shit, I salute them. You know what all I'm right. saying? So, right. you know, I, I got love for them. You know, I, I ain't one of them dudes that's like, ah, oh, man, the young niggas, this, that, or the other. I, I ain't like that, bro. I, you know, right, I fuck right. with everybody, you know what I'm saying? And it, anybody who want advice or want whatever feature from me or whatever from me, you know, I'm I'm there to do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just like a nigga, you know, pass the game to me. I'm here to pass the game on to whoever, you know, willing and receptive to it. You know what I'm saying? With that being but, said, go, go ahead, go ahead. Now nah, I was ahead. gonna say, but you know, just outside of my city, like man, it's, it's you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a few, you know, uh of these young youngsters that that I fuck with, um, I like Kodak. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Absolutely. Cause I just like, yeah, I just like the fact that he just, you know, don't give a fuck. He just do what he do. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kodak Black, Salute Kodak yeah. Black, Salute Kodak Black for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, bro, it's, you know, it's a lot of a lot of the youngsters doing their thing, bro, that I fuck with. All right, now Max, uh, would you would you Except it's not, bro. You are OG in this game. You follow what I'm saying? You are OG. Right. Point blank. This is right. Bob Kemp saying that you are OG, bro. So being an OG, uh, new artists coming in the game who might see this interview or might just be on some internet shit and they haven't come across this. What advice would an OG, uh, OG nigga like you, what advice you give to new artists coming in the game, bro? Man, kind of like just, just pick it back out what we just was talking about. Like you know, don't uh, take shit for granted. You know what I'm saying? Don't, 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 don't attribute your successes and your failures to the wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta know, you gotta pay attention to what worked, but really know why it worked. You know what right. I'm saying? And man, just, just don't think you have all the answers. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> hell yeah, man, you're right about that. Hell you know, yeah. like shit. You know, bro, we we been in this shit twenty plus years, and we still learn shit every day. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, don't 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 stop being receptive to you know niggas that's trying to give you game. You know what I'm saying? And don't you know? Don't feel like niggas trying to talk down on you or, or, or tell you what to do or whatever. Like you know, niggas just trying to give you wisdom. You know what I'm saying? And one one thing I you know. We came up in the under a different a different era, bro. Where it was right. like we respected OGs like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Um, I know you know youngsters now. Kind of you know it's like a man, y'all old niggas, and you know a lot right, of old right, niggas, right, right. A lot exactly. of old niggas at the same time too be like, ah, oh, man, them young niggas. You know, woo, 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 you know what I'm saying? So you know we gotta man, fuck all that, man. It's shit about getting money, bro. And it's about you know. Being successful, taking care of our families, and you know, being able to, you know, leave a legacy. You know what I'm saying? So, right. you know, I just try to tell niggas like that, bro. Like, don't take nothing for granted. You know what I'm saying? Work hard. This shit a grind. You know what I'm saying? And man, just stay, just stay with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and just do you. You know, fuck trying to do another nigga. Do you, man? Like, you know, right. one one thing that I would like to you know, say to a lot of these young artists is like, you know, develop your own sound. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, I know like a lot of, a lot of the dudes kind of like have a similar sound. You know, I'm not going to say they sound the same, but they have a similar style and sound. Uh, bro, no, no, Max, 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 they sound the same, bro. They sound the same, though. 
I mean, you know. <laughs> it sounds the same, yeah. It sounds the same, my nigga. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, when we was coming up, dog, you couldn't sound like no nigga. You couldn't look exactly. like no nigga. You exactly. You know, none exactly. of that shit. You exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would get ran out the game for, you know, even kind of similar to being right. similar to a nigga. Right, bro. So, right, know, bro. Just, just that, you know, I, 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 I wish a lot of a lot of them are two are like get with one producer or two producers and just develop a sound. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause if you pay attention, like every every artist that really do that, like, you know, you look at Drake and he got 40 and you know what I'm saying? They built the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? They built the sound, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, back when we was coming up, like, you know. You had producers like Dre, and you know he, you know he produced for N.W.A. Then eventually Death Row. You had like you know Manny Fresh with Cash Money, Beast by the Pound with P. Right, know, right, 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 right. Even like Rizzo with Wu Tang, and you know shit like that. It's like man, them dudes, you know Pimp C, you know Outkast, organized noise. Like it was like you could, you could only get that sound from them people. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Right, 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 right. So, you know, like, I wish a lot more of them would um, kind of, like, hone, you know, hone in on that shit and, 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 and do that more. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, just do your shit, man. Like, don't take no for an answer. Stand on their motherfucking neck every day. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so, uh, let's, 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 let's shift the shit going up direction. Uh, Maximum Nilla. Rap, 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 rap. But at the end of the day, this, this nigga Max don't win another direction. Maximum Nilla got movie roles, bro. Max got acting roles. Max is in, in a movie. You follow what I'm saying? So, uh, right. Speak on that. Uh, you have a movie called Video Girls or Making Good. Let me yeah. say before you before you speak on that thing, Making Good. Every nigga from the hood, bro. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> Making good, yeah. what do y'all niggas admit or not? Uh, Making good, that's a fantasy for us right there. You follow what I'm saying? Right, that's right. A fantasy for us. Just on some hood shit. Now, Max, you got a movie role with Making Good. How the fuck did that happen, bro? And, and Man, how, how, how did that happen? And what's the name of the movies? Give give us a whole little rundown on that, bro. Yeah, man. Go. It really go back to what we were just talking about a minute ago about relationships. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a relationship I had with uh, one of my partners. You know, he's still my close partner to this day, uh, named Matt. He, you know, it's a white dude. Him, like, when we was coming up, they had, like, a rap group and shit called South Coast Coalition. They was, like, the only white rappers down here. So they had, like, they whole right. lane, you know, uh, South Coast Coalition, T-Bow, the Firecracker, you know, they was doing their thing, and um, you know, eventually we we worked together, you know, they worked with air, pretty much everybody in our city, you know what I'm saying, because by them, you know, being in that white market, they kind of like, they knew like all the, you know, all they fans like, like listen to our music and want to see us in concert and shit, but they wouldn't necessarily come the way we perform it, you know what I'm saying? Because we right. perform it, you know, shit that, you know, niggas might get shot at any given time, you know what right, I'm saying? Right, so, right, 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 right. So, you know, they was able to, like, bring us to, like, they fans, you know what I'm saying? And the places that they, you know, go to and perform and shit. So, you know, I've been having a relationship with Matt for a long time where eventually when he stopped fucking with the music shit, he trans uh transitioned into, you know, producing movies and shit. Right. So that's how I got that role, bro. And um he you know, he put me in that role and uh it was like a role he was, you know, he was telling me back then, he was like, Man, a lot of people calling trying to, you know, get this role. Like he was telling me about Timberland had an artist, he was trying to uh get put in that role. You know, a lot of different people was reaching out trying to get that role, but he was like, nah, I'm putting Max in this role. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I got that, bro. It was a dope-ass experience. Like you say, Megan Good, you know, she like, you know, 
hood nigga, um, you know, pinup girl, you know what I'm saying? Right. She was, she was cool, you know. Yeah, she was cool, you know. She was cool as a motherfucker, but real down to earth and shit. And um, so, yeah, bro, it was a dope experience, you know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, so let, me, uh, let, me, let me follow up and ask you this, bro. So, Max, right now, outside of the movie shit, you working, you working on a solo app. You ain't, right. got a title, you ain't got a title for it yet. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, right. I mean, you talk about this off camera. You're working on a solo album, bro. Right. So, right. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you this question based on a nigga, a nigga like me. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. What can I expect to hear from the Max, Max Nilla solo app? What's going on with that? Man, like, and, you know, where, and where can we, when, when can we expect that? Man, what, <clears throat> What you can expect to hear is just boss game, bro. You know, like like you say, bro, I'm an OG. Like, I I I I accepted that. You know what I'm saying? I right. I I'm fully, you know, um, I fully stand in in them shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I right. know I ain't I ain't no I ain't, I ain't one of these young niggas running around trying to do what they do. You know what I'm saying? I let them right. do them because they, you know, the best at doing them. Right. Like, I'm gonna of do course. what I do. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, but like the rap game, bro, is like, you know, the young niggas, they got they shit on lock. But, <clears throat> you know, what about niggas like us who, you know, we we OGs, bro. We still listen to rap. We still want to hear niggas, you know, jamming. You know what I'm saying? But right. we want to hear niggas talking about shit that we could relate to more so than, you know, um, some of the younger artists might be talking about, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that that's where I'm at with it, bro. Like, you know, uh, is you know, I, I always shoot for a certain quality, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I always shoot for a certain, you know, different sounds and shit like that. I try to, you know, kind of experiment and do shit that I didn't do before. Kind of, you know, go a, a little different, you know, with the sounds and shit. But overall, but just you know, you just gonna get that OG shit. You gonna get that boss game, that real nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? That shit that you know gonna touch a real nigga soul. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. right. And um, as far as when it's gonna be soon, bro. Uh, probably like in the next. It's gonna be this summer for sure. This summer. For so, sure. That's for sure. That's for sure, right there. That's for sure. That's for sure. Right. And my uh, my partner uh X Five, he producing it. You know what I'm saying? Um uh, the project I'm working on now is like I was just talking about, like, you know, I like to lock in with you know, one or two producers and just create a overall sound, you know what I'm saying? So right. me and uh my partner X Five, you know, he didn't produce for a lot of different people, Lil Wayne, uh Lil Kiki did a lot of shit with um but he from BR and uh you know, he kind of bought me, you know, got me to really come come out of, you know, retirement with the music shit, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and jump back in it. But I got a little situation, you know, that I've been working on uh, that I just locked in, you know, as far as, like, for, you know, little, little distribution and shit. So it's all, it's all going to be coming real soon, bro. Let me, let me ask this, uh, Max. You got a club a collaboration album with uh level. Right. So what album called uh Cut the Chick. Cut the Chick, so, yeah. Where is Level from, bro? Where is he from, from for, first and foremost? And then what's up with that album? What, what was going with that? Man, Level is uh he from Baton Rouge too. You know, he like uh he like the generation under me. You know what I'm saying? He he's a little younger than me. He came like the after us, but like Level is known as you know the club banger king. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, like, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, he 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 make like just straight club bangers. You know what I'm saying? He he known for that. He got albums, you know. So um, he you know he done done um like he did an album with Mouse. He did an album with a couple of different people, people that when he was coming up that he always wanted to like work with and do albums with. 
Right. So uh, I was one of them people. And, you know, me and him had been talking about getting together and do some shit, but I had kind of just been doing, you know, focusing on other shit, not really the music. But right. once I decided, you know, I wanted to get back and start fucking with the music again, we locked in and did that. So, yeah, we uh we finished it. It's finished and shit. We uh actually we about to shoot a video for it for the first single called Flash Out. We shooting that Sunday. So oh okay. Um, this, this, this Sunday. This Sunday. Yeah, this Sunday is coming. Uh, uh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so that that's gonna be coming. Uh that shit should be coming out in the next two, three weeks. You know what I'm saying? That album. So yeah, it's called Cut the Check on uh, Level and Max Manetti. And you know, me and Level got songs already. Like one of the songs I was telling you about that, that, that like I got to do at the show called Can I Help You? It's me and Level on it. Um, All right. That's like a, you know, a Max classic, you know, with me and Level. So, you know, uh, Level, my dog, me, you know, we done done a few things. And uh, so, yeah, man, the album Cut the Check is coming. Like I say, that shit will be out in the next two, three weeks or so. I I so Max, done. Before we get out of here, we're gonna wrap it up. Before we get out of here, I I gotta do something with you that I call it a pick one challenge. You know what I'm saying? So, right. I'm gonna name two things. I want you to pick one. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You ready for this, Max? Yes, sir. Let's do it. You sure you ready for this, bro? I'm ready, man. All right, check this out. First thing, pick one. Cash money or no limit. I'm gonna go with cash money. Cash money? Yeah. All right. Second one. Death row a bad boy. Death row, uh be. Next one. Rockefeller a murder ink. Man, Rockefeller, man. Come on, man. Rockefeller, all right. <laughs> Next one. I right. Max. Max. Next one. Suge Knight or Jay Prince? I'm going to go with Jay Prince, dog. Next one. Scarface Ice Cube. Hey, now that's a hard one, bro. That's a hard one, bro. Pick one, Max. Pick I, one, bro. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go with Cube, but strictly because, like I told you earlier, I feel like Cube is the reason I rap, period. You know what I'm saying? So. All right. Everything I got in life, I feel like you know I owe it to that nigga some type of way. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's the hard one, though, bro. Face, you know, face like one of the goats. You know what I'm saying? So Max more type shit. So Max Miller picks Ice Cube over over Scarface. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go with Cube, bro. Just just for the simple fact that right. you know, no I, problem. I, I I started rapping because of him. No problem. All right, next one. DPG, Dog Pound Gangster. You, you kind of froze up, dog. DPG, Dog Pound Gangster, Dancing Corrupt, or or the you locks. Or the locks. You hear me? You can hear me? Yeah, I, I, can hear I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you now. DPG, Dog Pound Gangster, Dancing, Dancing Corrupt, or the locks. Uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with DPG, bro. But Jay the Kid's like man, he ghost that, you know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with DPG as a group. All right, next one, Ghetto Boys or NWA? Mm. Uh, man, I, I gotta go with. <sighs> I know it. I know it. I know it, nigga. I know it. Uh, that's a hard one, bro. Ghetto Boys or, or NWA? Who you rocking with, Max? Fuck, I'm going to go with Ghetto Boys, man. Ghetto Boys? For real? I'm going to go with Ghetto Boys. Ghetto Boys? Yeah. All right. Next one. You ready, Max? Yeah. Good and Mob or, or Outcast? Outcast. All right. UGK or eight ball MJG? I don't oh, care. Oh, 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 Max, Max. UGK or eight ball MJG? 
Hey, man, it don't matter who you say, UGK. For real? It don't matter who you say, UGK. Max, UGK or 8 Ball MJG? UGK, bro. All right, and, bro. Hey, I, hey, hey, and you know, Ball and G is, 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 is goat left, you know, but UGK, bro, that's, that's my, like, like I say, bro, I don't care who you say. I'm going with UGK. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, next one. Next one, Max. Lil Boost or Lil Webby? I'm going to go with Bad Ass, man. Boost. You go with Boost? Yeah. All right, next one. You ready, Max? Come on with it. Kevin Gates or NBA, or NBA Young Boy? Uh... Shit, give me young boy. Young boy? Yeah. All right. Last one. New Orleans. New Orleans. Mm -hmm. BG or Juvenile? Woo. That might be the hardest one out right there, bro. Pick one. I'm gonna pick one. Pick one, Max. Max, I'm asking Max Miller, BG Juvenile, pick one, Max. BG I'm, I'm, or I'm, Juvenile? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Juve, bro. I'm going to go with Juve. Tell me but, why. Tell me why. Man, because Juve just, I don't, it's hard, bro. Like, it's, it's, it, 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 that's a hard one, bro. Like, because Jizzle, he, you know, that's BG, man. You know, but right, I don't know. I'm, right, I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just go with juvenile, just from a, just the, 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 the more artistic side of me. All right, I'm gonna go with juvenile because I feel like you know, juvie just, juvie kind of more, um, versatile. You know what I'm saying? Like he. He, he he you know just Juve got that old man. I, I get I get it, I get it, I get it, I get you know? it. Yeah. I get it. I just want you to I, I just want you to explain, but I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. All right, all right. That's what's up, that's what's up, that's what's up. I get it. Yo got no more? You got some more? That is it, bro. That's that's a pick one challenge right there. That's it, bro. That's it, dog. That's it. it. Matter of yeah. fact, hold up, let me make sure I, uh yeah, that's it right there, bro. You see, you know what I'm saying? So uh Everything I just said, Max and Nell, we're going to hold you to that, bro. You follow what I'm saying? We're going to hold you right. to that. So this is your homeboy, Maul Pim, a.k.a. MCD. Hey, I'm, I'm going to say this, though. It, 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 it depends on when you ask me, bro. I couldn't I could have picked the, the, the other one or any one of them, except UGK. Uh, you could say Jackson 5, UGK. I'm picking UGK. You could say... Uh, Temptation UGK, I'm picking UGK. You can say hot bars UGK, I'm picking UGK. I'm picking UGK over here about it, bro. I and, and you know what? Honestly, I get that. I get that. But based off this last versus battle, bro, I feel like y'all reconsider. You know what I'm saying? But I, I get it. I get it, bro. I get it. Hey, but but at the same time, no, bro, like I get pimp it. Ain't, I get it pimp ain't dealt, bro. You know what I'm saying? But right, bun right, right, right. Rest in peace, Tim C. Had the, Tim C. I get that. Yeah, yeah. You know, Bun had to hold it down on his own, bro. Right, bro. right, right. Hey, but 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 this is the thing, bro. Like, Bun B murder verse, that's one of the dopest verses in rap history. Of I don't course. care who, of course. who you go get, from what era, from what. Of course. Well, yeah, like, so, you of know, course. but. But you just gotta understand, but UGK to me, that's like, bro, I, you know, that's that's my all time favorite anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. That's I, just I, I get it, bro. That's why I ain't gonna, yeah. that's why I ain't gonna challenge you. I ain't gonna question you. I, I get it. Me and you I, got. I, I, I know you. I that. know you, you from Tennessee, though. I know you, you from Tennessee. You, mother, so you, you motherfucking right. You motherfucking yeah. right. Yeah. You motherfucking right, bro. You so motherfucking I, I, I right. I got you. I got you. I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I ain't gonna challenge that. You feel what I'm saying? I, I get what you're saying. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, man. So, again, y'all, this is uh, Maul the Pimp, aka MCP. And this is another special edition of the Pimp Out TV podcast with my nigga Max Manella. 
Salute, OG, based out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, you know what I'm saying? Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is called Pimp Hall TV. Go to my website, www.modelpimp.com. You follow know what I'm saying? Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, which is at modelpimp. Much love. We doing what we do. And we out of here.